I'm Larry Walther and this is PrinciplesofAccounting.com Chapter 2. In this particular module we will be looking at the General Journal. The General Journal is a chronological listing of transactions and events for a particular organization described in their debit credit form. You probably are already familiar with the idea of a journal. Uh, a, a journal represents a log of activity. If you kept a journal on a trip you would think about recording or writing down narratives of events that occurred, things you saw, places you went, things you did. Uh, that's a journal. A journal, a general journal for a business is the chronological listing of the transactions for the business. It's also known as a book of original entry. As transactions and events occur, they're originally entered into the accounting system through a general journal process. The general journal is not sufficient by itself to prepare financial statements. It is simply a listing, and here's an example of a general journal, it is simply a listing of all of the transactions and events as they occur described in their debit credit effect. We'll look more closely at the journal entries in just a few moments. Uh, for now though, if we just look at the narrative, on January 1st here we issued stock to shareholders in exchange for cash. And we're describing it and we're also showing that accounts are affected cash and capital stock with debits and credits. More on that in a moment. The next transaction we paid advertising expense for initial advertising program and so it would go. The process of journalizing, to look clo more closely at this now, uh, we begin by looking at our transactions and events and think about what accounts are affected and are they debited or credited. It's typical to list debits justified left and then the credit indented to the right slightly as we'll see in the following illustration. Recognize also that a transaction might be a compound journal entry because multiple accounts, more than two accounts would be affected. We'll see that in our last example that follows. Here's our general journal. So on January 17th, we now look specifically at a transaction where we provided services to customers on account. If we think about that, accounts receivable, we now are entitled to receive payment. Our accounts receivable is increasing. We now need to think back on our debit credit rules. Debits increase assets. Accounts receivable is an asset and is increasing, therefore we are debiting accounts receivable. It's left justified, the $8,000 amount is recorded in the debit column. Right indented to the right is service revenue, it's right justified and listed in the credit column. Think about we provided the services, that increased our asset, it also increased revenues of the company reflected in the income statement. So we are going to, as you know, the rules for debits and credits, revenues are increased with a credit, hence the credit to service revenue. On the 18th of January, we paid half of a bill that we previously received, and so accounts payable is being reduced. Accounts payable is a liability that's going down with a debit. Cash is also going down as we disperse the money. Cash goes down, we credit the asset to reflect the decrease. In the next transaction, we're collecting $4,800 on an outstanding accounts receivable. Cash is being boosted by this transaction. Cash going up, being an asset, it's debited. And accounts receivable, since we're collecting it, the accounts receivable account itself is now decreasing. They no longer owe us the money since they've paid us. Accounts receivable is an asset that's decreasing. Assets are decreased with credits. You can see the importance of what I, uh, what I emphasized in the previous module, and that is it's important to memorize the debit credit rules. It makes the study of accounting far more efficient, and you're starting to begin to appreciate why that is so. Let's look at this last transaction. It is a compound journal entry this time because three accounts are affected. Here we bought land, making a $5,000 down payment and agreeing to pay $10,000 later. So land, we've bought a $15,000 asset. The asset is now ours. Our land account, an asset goes up and is being debited $15,000. We're giving up $5,000 cash, an asset that is going down, thus credited $5,000. And finally, we have a liability to pay in the future that has been increased by $10,000 by virtue of this transaction, hence the credit to notes payable. It balances, the debits equal credits, this is really as simple as this system is, perhaps confusing at this point, but as simple as this system is, it's really a brilliant system that we can capture and describe every transaction event in their debit credit form in a self-balancing way. In the next module, we'll see how we move this data into the accounts, into the general ledger for purposes of preparing financial statements.